Uh, welcome everybody, thanks for being here. Um, very briefly, if you want to look at the slides online, um, I'm inviting you to just go to my Twitter timeline and my last tweet will have a link to the slides. So the slides are online, if you're interested in the slides, they have some link in the slides, just go to my timeline and you can find them online, they're browser based, so they will work for you. Okay. So very briefly about myself, um, why I'm here. I'm uh, with a small team that's called the API Academy. We are a small team of five people. And what we do is we talk about API related topics. We talk at events like this. We talk to um, clients and we, we do consulting. So we just try to help people using APIs in a better way. So that's, that's our task. And the way how we do that is even though we are part of a software company, we are part of CA Technologies, we don't talk about products. Our goal really is just to talk about API, strategy, design, management, and all matters associated with it. As a part of that, we uh, just published a book, really just because it came out two days ago. Um, Right after this talk, we'll actually have a book signing downstairs. There's a couple of free books there. So if you're interested in that book, it's called Continuous API Management. And uh, what I will do today is talk a little bit about the stuff that's in the book and the way how we use it and how we actually continue developing it. And what you will realize during my presentation is that most of the work that we do is with big organizations. So it's not so much about people getting started with APIs sort of in the void, but it's really more like how do you get big organizations to adopt APIs, understand APIs, and really get the benefits out of not just using APIs, but also using them in a way that helps them to change and to adapt more quickly, because that's kind of the value proposition of APIs at the large scale, right? Is that APIs allows you to be more loosely coupled, so you can change more quickly and you can become more successful by adapting to your environment more quickly. So the reason why I talk about an API journey is because I really think that for large organizations it really often is a big journey to understand what APIs are all about, that they are not a technical thing most importantly, but that they're really about structuring organizations in a different way so that the organization can change more quickly and can become more successful, hopefully, in the marketplace. And one of the things that we've noticed when we talk about APIs, of course, in many cases, we also talk about digital transformation, right? And um, so, because in all these wonderful vision statements, there always has to be an eagle, so I have an eagle as well. And, um, and this is kind of, this is the most generic digital transformation vision I try to, um, to come up with. So I hope you can all subscribe to that. It doesn't really say anything. It just says, digital transformation, yay, and we have an eagle. Um, but then in many cases, what you see when you go into big organizations is they have a kind of a bigger problem to really put that into action, right? Not just understand that, yes, it would be good if we digitally transformed ourselves into something better, but how do we do that, right? And how I call this thing is the execution gap. Um, it's, it's sort of a gap between you have a really good idea and then... The, the realization that, oh, it's kind of a long and hard way ahead. So that's actually me um, in the Grand Canyon, and we had a big project there. We wanted to get to the other side, right? It's kind of the same thing. You have this great idea, the vision of, yes, I want to go to the other side, and then you look to the route ahead, and you realize, hmm, that's kind of far, and uh, things can go wrong along the way, so how do I plan this better? And that's a little bit of the story that I want to talk about today, this journey, right? How can you be a little bit more successful in that journey by better understanding where you are, where your organization is, and what steps you have to take, and how you can help parts of your organization to make that journey, right? Because often also, if you're an organization, parts of your team already are somewhere down there, right? They have started building APIs, they have played around with things for various reasons. So it's really something where you first need to understand where am I even, so to speak, before you can start moving on. So the very simple picture I think that you sometimes can see is basically that, well, digital transformation can't be this hard, right? So you set a vision, the eagle thing, right? Um, you define a strategy. This is how we make it happen. And then you put an API program in place that tells everybody how to make it happen, right? And that's 
probably on a very abstract level, it's kind of okay. But in many cases, what we've realized is that what actually is happening is you have kind of a brownfield transformation, right? You're not starting from scratch where everybody has nothing and they're just waiting for you to come with your digital transformation. People have been doing things. They have done what I call proto APIs, right? So there are all kinds of integrations along the way, often not built in a great way, but built out of necessity. It's very interesting to understand why they're even there, what teams have done to make them happen, right? So instead of just sitting down and trying to come up with a strategy and a program, what we've realized is that it actually makes more sense to first try to understand what's happening already, right? Because when you start talking to teams and to business units, like I said, in particular in big organization, you realize that there has been a lot going on already because, well, you know, connecting IT systems is not something new, right? It has been happening for a long time. All we want to do is maybe help people to do it better, but it helps if we understand how they've done it before. And one of the things that we always see and also tell organizations is guidelines are a good idea, right? Like help people better understanding how to build APIs, what matters, what technologies might help you and so forth. But instead of trying to start from scratch, what I now come to believe is actually that it's better to kind of evolve them out of existing knowledge that exists in your organization. So if you look at some of the guidelines, and this is a link that, to something that you might know, it's called the API Stylebook. So if you're just interested in guidelines, you can go to the API Stylebook. Um, it's, it's managed by um, Arnaud Loret, and um, he has created this wonderful set of resources where you can look at API guidelines from Adidas, Zalando, the White House, uh, Microsoft, and big companies just saying how to do good APIs. But instead of just writing those down sort of into the void, right, we are, we're taking a little bit of a different approach. But what, what we say is, first of all, there should be sort of a structure to them. So for each thing that you put into the guidelines, explain why it's in there, explain what to do, give people options how to do it, and say, well, this is one way how you can do it. If you find a better way, that's fine too, let us know. And also allow people to understand how they can verify compliance, right? Like I've done this, um, is there an easy way for me to kind of get your green light, right? And also guidelines kind of depend on um, where your API stands. Is that API for public consumption? Is it an internal API? Is it used by one other organization or by one other partner or by thousands, right? So then you might have different requirements in terms of how guidance has to be applied. And then the question is also, how do you have governance in place that actually makes it happen that people actually adhere to that guidance? But before you start that, what we recommend is a good exercise is to engage something that uh, we've dubbed our API archaeology, right? So archaeology is basically just digging stuff up and trying to understand why it's there, right? Why people created those things. And API archaeology is kind of the same thing, right? You look at existing integrations, like an existing connections in your landscape, and you try to understand why did they do it? How did they do it? What made them do it this way, right? Maybe how would we do it today, right? So just understanding why people have been doing things. And in big organizations, that actually can be quite an exercise. Right? It's, it's not an easy thing to do if you're a company with 100,000 employees to, not to the very last detail, right? but to at least roughly understand how maybe systems are talking to each other, how partners are talking to your company, and so forth. But it's very useful because it allows you to understand not just where you want to go, but where you are, and that's typically a good thing to understand. Right? So what you will find is what we call these proto-APIs, and what I want to talk about is just that by understanding those proto APIs and distilling sort of some best practices out of them, I think you have a better chance of not just having people practicing API craft by creating APIs here and there, but have a better culture of an API landscape that really grows in a more coherent way, right? Where you try to 
connect people a little bit better and make them understand how they have been building APIs, how others have been building APIs, and how maybe is a good idea to build APIs going forward. And in order to do that, um, I would like to introduce you to two concepts. So one is called the API Landscape Compass. In, the, um, in that book that I mentioned, the, the um, Continuous API Management book, right, we say that it's, it's important to learn from existing API culture. And that you can use that landscape view to understand where you've been and where you want to go. And then in order to structure your thinking about the landscape, because API landscapes are kind of daunting if you have thousands or tens of thousands of APIs, there's a variety of what we call aspects that you can think about. And because we felt like it, um, we made it, we turned it into our hobby to identify all of these um, aspects, starting with the V. <laughs> so here we have them. Um, and the idea of these aspects is to just give you a little bit of guidance around what are the things that I have to think about when I look at an API landscape and what's happening there. I want to walk you through that very briefly. So variety is the idea that APIs come in different shapes or forms and in most organizations it doesn't make a lot of sense to just mandate one exact technology. Right? There's different use cases and many, very many, in very many cases you will have different styles of APIs around. Vocabularies is the idea that in many cases APIs can reuse vocabularies, which can be very helpful for teams. So for example, if you face the relatively normal uh, challenge of how, how do I deal with error formats, right? You don't have to reinvent error formats. There's a standard for that. So maybe that's a vocabulary that everybody can happily reuse if you just tell people, look, 25 of our APIs are using this standard. Why don't you use that instead of inventing your own? Volume, that's the question sometimes in landscapes. How hard is it for your developers to just create more APIs, right? Is it something where developers almost feel like, I don't want to do that, it's hard, there's so many hurdles to go through? Or is that something where you say, well, the idea of digital transformation is to have more APIs. More is better, right? So we really should make it easy for people to create more APIs. Velocity is the question that it should be easy for teams to change APIs, right? So that's one of the main value propositions of digital transformations is that you don't have this tight coupling where you're afraid of touching anything because as soon as you touch something, everything else will crumble down, right? And in digital transformation land, in perfection, right? You add things, you change things, and you can do that individually at the pace that works for that product. And you can do that because, because you have designed things in a loosely coupled way, meaning that everybody can move at their own velocity. Right? That's a pretty important thing to keep in mind. Vulnerability is the typical security thing, right? Have you thought about like every API you have is a potential security problem, right? So we hope you have thought about that. Visibility becomes the question of once you have a certain number of APIs, these are the products that you have, right? This is basically what defines you as a company, right? At a certain point, you can become very fundamentalist and say, if we don't have an API for something, it doesn't exist, right? The only thing that makes sense for us is something that has an API because then we can work with it, right? If we can't work with it, what point does it make to have it? But if we have many things, we have to make them visible. So that's a challenge as well. Versioning is this problem of once you start working at a certain velocity, do you have a good plan of how you can decouple people who might work with a certain version and you update your thing? Like, how do you manage that, right? Is if you deploy a new version, do you need to announce that to 25,000 users and they have to actually do something? That would be a bad idea. And the last thing is volatility. This is the one that often actually is not very well developed in organizations I've seen. So volatility means that if you work with APIs, like anything that you do should always be done under the assumption that the thing that you work with can always go away, right? Don't depend on it critically. At least do something that's well-defined. Maybe you have to say, if this thing is gone, I can't do anything. But in many cases, you can actually do reasonable fallback behavior, 
right? And many things in API landscapes are not designed that way. They just crash in unpredicted ways, which is really bad because then you have that old, brittle, tightly coupled landscape that we didn't want to have. Now, all these aspects actually are things to think about, right? And what we've done in one organization, one large organization I've worked with, is we've done IPA archaeology. So what we've done is we talked to five different business units. We um, kind of extracted their API guidelines from them. They were not always like written down API guidelines. So we talked to them and asked them, well, what do you guys typically do? What have you done? So we kind of extracted their API guidelines and then we rated them on all these aspects, right? And say, well, in this team, they actually do a pretty good job of encouraging variety. And they say, well, if you need to write, if you need to have a different technology, that's fine with us, right? And like I said, in most teams, they didn't really do a good job with volatility. So it was never really part of the culture to say, if I have an API that I use, whatever I do should still work reasonably if that thing goes down, right? But what this allowed us to do is really to understand kind of where the API culture is without us defining it, right? And now our next step will be, which uh, I'm in the process of doing, I haven't finished it, right? Basically take all of these guidelines and compile them into sort of a harmonized guideline document, which hopefully doesn't have too many inconsistency, inconsistencies, we'll see, right? But also appreciating that the ways how different teams are solving a certain problem may be different, right? Where you can say, well, this team decided to solve this problem that way, that team decided to solve it in a different way, and both are okay ways, right? It's just how things are getting done around here. And if you feel the need to steer that, well, then you have to think about how you can maybe change the culture that you have. But first, it's interesting to just realize where you are, right? So converging guidelines towards a unified view is something that then can be based on an understanding what actually happens in the organization. So first, you need to analyze the guidelines that you have, merge them, and then... Um, also, what took me a while also in terms of sanitizing my own speak, um, never talk about best practices, right? We, we don't say that anymore, we say good practices, right? Because there's never a best practice for anything, there's just a good practice where you say, well, that's a good way of solving this, there's others as well. If we have three good ways of solving that, that's great too. Um, so there's never like a single, own, uh, only single way of doing something, right? And individual units in the end will be free to fork and use those guidelines that we come up with because we want them to evolve them, right? We don't want to set the guidelines. We see ourselves as editors of the guidelines, right? Where our job will be to unify those into something that everybody can kind of live with and then tell them, well, if you need more, if you want to do things differently, go ahead and do it, just let us know. Right? And then we can actually redistribute this to everybody and say, hey, there's a new way how this is done. This team does it that way. If everybody's interest, anybody's interested, go and talk to them. So this is the one compass that I wanted to show to you. And there's one other thing that I also would like to talk about very briefly. So what I just showed you is a way to assess API landscapes, right? Understanding what are the guiding principles that guide that API landscape and that help people in that API landscape to create new APIs. Now what's also interesting is to understand what about individual APIs. And for that, in the book we also define, or I, I guess you can say we define two different things. So for API products, we define one thing that we call pillars, which are areas of investment that you should use when you evolve an API, and we define maturity where we say an API goes basically through different stages of life. It's prototyped and at some point it dies, right? So, and we've identified 10 areas of investment, strategy, design, documentation, development, testing, deployment, security, monitoring, discovery, and change management. And these differ in terms of how much effort you put into them depending on the maturity of your product, right? So if you build a first prototype, you probably will not invest a lot in documentation, 
You just say, ah, I don't care, right? But once you roll it out, you might want to invest more. And once it becomes, let's say, part of an external API that you open up to partners, you might invest even more because it's kind of important, right? So what this allows you to do is a little similar to what I just showed you. What I've done here now is, and that is something that, that we have decided in the organization I work with, it could be different for you, where we say for each of those stages that we have for APIs, which we identified as being the create stage, a publish stage, a realize stage, a maintain stage, and a retirement stage, just five different stages of APIs. For each of those stages, these are the investments we want to see in different areas, right? So for example, for documentation, for the create stage, we say, don't bother, right? You don't have to. We don't ask you to do that, right? But from the very beginning, really start thinking about security, right? Because if you do not have any idea how to do security, that's probably not very good. So as soon as you publish it for the first time to anybody else who's then able to use it, you should have sort of a relatively good idea of how your security model looks like. So what this allows us to do is, in a similar way to what I showed you before, to understand things in the API landscape that happen, but on the individual API level, right? So we can look at each individual API, we can look at where it is and understand, is it kind of covering the area that it should be covering, or is it lacking in certain respects? And the way that we do it is we assess product status. And I think that's different now, sorry, just got to reload. Um, we assess the product status by going through a couple of questions. So this is the product status for uh, change management, right? Where we basically go through questions such as, does your design include a plan how to make any changes to the API? Or the last one, do you have a plan how to decommission the API? And how will this be communicated to active consumers? Right, so that's an interesting question. If you have 10,000 10, API users and you want to switch off your API, um, it's good if you have a plan how to do that and don't just switch it off, right? So, so these are questions that basically allow you to understand whether the different pillars have been addressed in a appropriate way. And the way you can then use those, and so far we've only done that for a few APIs to so just play around with the idea, right? For each API, you can basically go through these questionnaires and see where is it, right? So I've, I've just visualized that here for three APIs that we've used as our uh, prototype, so to speak, for this exercise, where we tried to come up with the idea of how well did they actually address the questions that you address in those different pillars, right? And like all of them weren't doing great in discovery. Most of them had the rough idea that yes, security is probably an important thing to do. And what we want to do over time, and that's kind of for me the, the journey that we're on, we're not there yet, but if you're interested in chatting about it, I'd be more than happy to chat about it with you. <coughs> what we want to do is then make it very easy for teams to go through these assessments to a certain level themselves and figure out how are we doing, right? Our API is in this stage. Have we addressed everything that we should be addressing? If not, where's the guidelines that can help us to do that? So our end goal, so to speak, is get to a point where there's a certain self-service idea of teams being able to assess how they're doing and then being able to get help in terms of, well, we should, be, should, should probably look at this a little bit more, right? And what we want to do is give them a easy way to do that. And like I said, mostly it's based on the idea of first we understand where everybody is about in terms of their API journey, and then we help them to better kind of steer their API journey in a, in a useful way. Okay, um, that's all I have. So um, in conclusion, what I wanted to present today is just a little bit of the ideas that we are using and guiding the API journey. So how can you become a little bit more systematic and a little bit more scalable in large organizations, particularly in understanding where you start, understanding where you want to go, helping teams with investing efforts at the right time in the right areas, and also understand where your whole landscape is and having an idea of basically gathering the information and then helping, helping you to steer the landscape a little bit 
forward. Okay, thank you very much. With that, I'm done. Like I said, uh, some of the ideas, not the compasses, but the aspects and the pillars and all of that is um, taken from our book. Like I said, there's a book signing, um, I think, happening right now downstairs. So if you're interested in that, please join me there. Otherwise, thanks very much for showing up.